All right, so morning after the game, time to give some actual thoughts after sleeping on how OU did against UTEP in the first game of the Brent Venables era. Talk about all that in a little bit more here coming up in a couple seconds. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports, talking OU football, college football, and sports in general. We're going to dive right into the OU UTEP game and my thoughts the morning after. I like to take some time to marinate on what happened. Gave my knee-jerk reactions with the Horns Down podcast on yesterday. You can check that out on YouTube. I will put the link up right here. So you can check that out. Give our knee-jerk reactions, but I kind of want to take a moment, digest what happened, and let's talk through it and dive right in, shall we? So, first and foremost, shout out to all the fans that showed up to the game. I'm here in Texas uh, at my son's soccer tournament, and it's hot. Like, real hot. And I know that it was like 100-plus in Oklahoma, and it felt like over 140 on the field. So everybody decided to show up there and actually sit in the stands and enjoy the game. I salute you. Because... I was cooking, watching soccer, and I was cooking, trying to uh, listen to the game at the same time. So when I went back and watched what went down, let's start off. We'll talk offense, kind of thoughts around that, thoughts on defense, and then thoughts just in a holistic look of what OU football is at right now. So first off, the offense itself did what it wanted to do. It went out there, high pace offense, play after play after play after play after play. That's what you want out of an offense ran by Jeff Levy. You want them to be able to get out there, go, go, go. And the funny thing is, is that you can tell they were at that point because UTEP started having injuries or cramps right in the middle of those possessions, which in a way slowed things down, but the offense still went really, really fast. Think about it this way. The OU offense scored 21 points within the first eight minutes of the game. 21. That's facts. Now they finished with 42 because at a certain point, you got to kind of slow things down to help your defense. You know, there's one thing you hear me talk about all the time is the offense needs to help the defense in some capacity. And the defense has to help the offense. And the way you do that for each other is the offense has to keep the opposing defense on the field a little bit longer so the deep, our, their defense can rest. And then their defense needs to find a way to get the other team's offense off the field really fast. That's what you want. So. They did that. I mean, besides the fact that Gavin Freeman ran that ball holding in, what was that, um, 40-plus yards on his first carry as a Sooner, as a walk-on freshman, salute my man. You basically showed us what you are, and you're definitely going to get a lot of game moving forward. But outside of that, 21 points in eight minutes, that's how that OU offense is going to run for the rest of the year. All they've got to do is tighten up the routes, tighten up the communication. Like that first pass that Dylan Gabriel threw to Mims, and it was it was a post, a little off. It's okay because they connected later on in the game. So you could see that they were testing everything out and getting to exactly what they want to get. Oh, you did what they wanted to do. So we should salute them for that. Next on that portion of it is let's take a gander at the run game. The run game and offensive line were probably the two things I was most concerned about going into this game, especially because the biggest thing with the run game was is Eric Gray is now starting running back. Eric got over 100 yards rushing in this game, and that satisfied me. Very happy to see he's get 100 yards. I've never felt like he was a feature back. I've always felt like he's more of a change of pace guy, someone you could throw out in the flat, put out on the slide, uh, bring in and run every once in a while between the tackles. But he had a good game, 16 carries over that 103. And then Marcus Major, though. Yeah, I think he may end up being the feature back by the end of the season with Gray being mixed in and out. I think Gray may actually get close to averaging 100 yards a game with Major as a feature back just because of the way this system is. As fast-paced as it is, it's what you want. And they, for the most part, really abuse UTEP's defense. No turnovers, some miscues on the offensive line, but that's okay. That that's something that's going to be expected, especially with the offensive line being new. Um, no Wanye Morris, which threw things out. I didn't get a chance to put a video out on that one, so my apologies. But Guyton, Tyler Guyton. I was high on Tyler Guyton when we got him as a transfer from TCU. Go watch that video. 
six seven two twenty three twenty six seven three twenty does not look like it, and he was out there muscling dudes. He was throwing them around, and when I saw that, yeah, I'm I'm even more sold on. Tyler Guy. So expect him to be something long term. Wanye has got to get himself together. Preventable said in an interview that he has some personal stuff he's taking care of on and off the field, trying to get him back in the right headspace and going. I really want Wanye to do well. I know he will get to that point. But Tyler Guy might be uh, fighting to take his job <laughs> if he don't be careful. And that's what you want to see out of this offensive line. It's going to take some time for them to really gel the way you want them to. But I think that we have a reason to be excited about the way that this offense looks. Now, back to that fast-pacedness, 21 points in eight minutes is huge. That's also why when we talk about the defense, you'll understand why UTEP was able to score 13 points in this game. But this is what you want to expect. Plus, they didn't pull out everything. And that's the other thing everybody has to understand, and we'll talk about that even more on defense. This was – borderline vanilla of a setup and they didn't need the team to you know UTEP and every other team they're playing against to be able to scout them perfectly this game was a let's see where we are let's see what team we are let's assert our physicality and dominance I told y'all this was the most important game of the season for me because I want to see how they come out and they did everything I expected them to do the exact way they were forceful in the offensive line they were forceful in the backfield Dylan Gabriel was gunslinging, and he didn't care. He tried. He tried everything he possibly could, and all of that stuff's going to polish up. So all you naysayers that felt like this was not a very good game, please jump in the comments and tell me why. I'm trying to understand your point of view because I didn't see that. I saw that this team was not out there trying to be world beaters. They were just trying to win the game forcefully, and they did that. They did everything they wanted in this game. So Marvin Mims. My man, I think he's going to try for a bullet in the cough. <laughs> he was out there doing it. And I am happy, happy to see how well he played in that game. And Dylan Gabriel was trying to get him the ball. Like, you could tell he was trying to force feed it to him. And I have an appreciation for that. Like, I can't even knock the way that that was, you know, going down. So, like, looking at his numbers, Mims came out here, three catches, 81 yards, 27 yards average, 42-yard catch, that deep one that he did get. That's not going to be the only one we'll see. Now, the 233 yards passing was a lot lower than I expected, but they also ran for 259 yards. That's a lot. That's just pounding it, being physical, being physical, being physical. And that's something that also helps, like I said, the defense long term. So shout out to the offense. Did what I thought you all were going to do. And let's go forward with that. Let's talk about the defense now. So when I went and did some recon on UTEP and looked at Garvin, uh, Haddison, and the way that they played offense. Remember, UTEP played in a bowl game last year. Now, they were 7-6, and six, but they played in a bowl game last year. So they did okay. They weren't world beaters, but... They competed. They had one game where they scored under 15 uh, points, and that was 13 against uh, Boise State at Boise State. So they know how to ball, and they like to sling it. That's the thing with Hardison is, is I mentioned this on a couple pods I was on before, is that his comp was Josh Allen when he was at Wyoming. Now, not Josh Allen three years in at Buffalo. I'm talking about Josh Allen at Wyoming, who would just sling that thing and just sling that thing. That was it. (laughs) But Hardison's got that kind of talent. And you could tell with some of the passes he was throwing, he was able to really hit players in certain spots, especially because the defense was playing like a soft zone. He was able to hit his man, but he wasn't able to go where he wanted to. He wanted to go deep, like deep. He likes to launch the ball. And the OU defense forced him to do the opposite of what their offensive game play is. He had to figure it out. Their biggest play was 16 yards. That was it. They're known for going for 30s and 40s on a regular basis. That is the type of offense they have. Now, Artisan doesn't have the greatest completion percentage, and that's okay because he's a slinger. He just throws that thing. Oh, you stopped that. And that was the game plan, and that's what you want. Also, everyone, the pressure that the defensive line was able to get, they got enough. They were forceful, and you could tell. Even better for Oklahoma. I think this is the thing that jumped out the most to me is – 
with such a vanilla defense, they still held him to 319 yards. That's under their average from last year. They averaged over 390 a game last year. That held him to 319 yards in this game, 3.9 yards per play. Slowed him down. They slowed him down and forced him to do the things that they did not want to do. That's exerting your dominance. That's that's controlling the game. And that's why this game was so important to me. Because if oh, you can go out there with a vanilla setup and just get used to each other, that's a win. And that's what we got out of the Sooners in this game. Those two scores at the initial portion of the game, it's kind of a little bit on the offense and the defense. The reason why I give it a little bit on the OU offense, too, is that they scored 21 points within the first eight minutes of the game. The first possession was like a minute and 30-something seconds. And now, let's keep this in mind, too. These weren't just short plays. Like, the, the, the Gavin Freeman run was a very fast <laughs> touchdown. It was like in two plays. But before that, they actually had to go the full length of the field. The initial kickoff, they had to go basically the full length of the field. And then the second touchdown was definitely the full length of the field. And y'all know in that second touchdown that the time of possession was, let's pull that up real quick, a minute and 48 seconds. They went 93 yards in a minute and 48 seconds. At a certain point, your defense is going to get tired because that second possession for UTEP where they had – after that touchdown, it was four plays, negative three yards, a minute and 58 seconds, OU scored within two plays, 55 yards, within 30 seconds. And so the defense then at that point was on the field the longest. And that's where you're going to see this in this type of offense and defense combination is a Jeff Levy type, Josh Heupel type offense does not yield the opportunity for a lot of shutouts, mainly because even though they run the ball a lot, they're so explosive. They score really fast. And that means your defense is coming right back on the field. And so that's what happened in this one. So the next two scores for UTEP were possessions of 12 minutes and 41 seconds total. They had the ball for 12 minutes and 41 seconds total in those two those two scores. The first one's a field goal, 15 plays for 49. It took them 15 plays to 49 yards. One, that's a long-ass time for 15 plays and only going 49 yards. <laughs> and two, I mean, the defense was doing as much as they possibly could without getting exhausted, especially in the heat. So that's something that you got to take into um, factor into this situation, as well as that set, that touchdown. They went ten plays, eighty five yards, which that's actually a lot. That's pretty pretty good over a five minute span. Ten plays, eighty five yards, but the defense didn't get a break because the offense ended up punting the ball three plays for yards. And the problem when that was, it was mainly it was a pass to Marcus Major run, and then it was a pass on third and six, which that's probably not something they should have did. Should have did more runs in that position. They did more runs in that position, probably wouldn't even head back to UTEP, but I digress. The point is, is that that defense had to play a lot. And though, in that too, that's, like I said, 12 minutes felt like straight because that, oh, that offensive possession was only 58 seconds. So that's where the exhaustion came in. And then Levy, made his adjustments, went out there on a four-minute drive, let him play 68 yards, get a touchdown, and what they do? Up the defense. Defense got some rest. They got some breathers and all of that heat. That's what you're going to see a lot of. And so from there, the second half, the defense did what it's supposed to do. They let them have a whole bunch of long plays, long possessions, but they also helped them and forced them to be done on downs. Because at a certain point, when your offense scores a lot of points, think about it this way. Your offense scores a bunch of points, and then – once that goes down, the other team's not going to be able to just punt it on fourth down most of the time. They're going to have to go for it. They're going to have to go for it. And when you do, when they go for it, that's when you're going to get the ball on downs on a regular basis. And that's exactly what this team did. Unless they're in their own uh, side of the field, they're probably going to go for it at about the 40 going forward. And in this one, they forced them on downs. They started forcing punts. They gave them a couple field goals, which I'm not mad about. Uh, they give a field goal. That's not bad. And then they end the game with the interception, which is what you want. And so, and this is when y'all got the second string and everything in. So the defense did everything you wanted, especially with the vanilla setup, a soft zone, you could tell. And if, as each week goes on, you're going to see more stuff instituted. And up into the Nebraska game, that's when I expect to really see what the OU defense is going to look like. 
Kent State next week will be similar to this game. Probably see a few more elements thrown in, but it'd be similar to this one. I expect another blowout in that game because that's the game that's supposed to go down. So, yeah, overall, holistically, the OU offense and defense did everything they were supposed to do in the Brent Venables era. We now have a very, very, very viable team. It, it looks good. Venables was all over the place. He was he was he had his hands in and helping everybody. You could tell that Ted Roof and Jeff Levy, as well as Ty Bates, all had influence in this game. That's what you want to see Sooner fans. So be excited. You have every reason to be excited in this, game, in this season because that was – what you wanted out of your team the first time they stepped on the field with all those new pieces. They looked like they knew what they were doing. So next week, I expect a lot more from the defense. I'm hoping that they institute a lot more fanciness, I guess you could say, on the defensive side, and they actually go out there and really dominate Kent State. We'll see. But um, jump in the comments. Let me know what you felt about the first game for Oklahoma under the Brent Venables era in the regime. Tell me what you think about it. How excited are you? How disappointed are you? Let me know. I'll comment on some of your comments later on this week. Uh, We'll do a preview for the Kent State game. I'll probably jump on with the Horns Down podcast again, as well as I'm going to have a special guest later this week to talk about a game that Sooner fans actually care about, which is Texas versus Alabama. I'm stoked. You should be stoked. Hit the like, subscribe button, as you always do, and uh, we'll chop it up in a few days. Peace.